Well, good morning. It is July 21st, 2023. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, what a peace, inner peace to know that we are loved by God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And if we choose to, we can be in intimate relationship with him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might have life. Jesus came to give you and me a fresh start. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. It brought sin into man. But Jesus came to get rid of that. On Calvary, he bore our sins. That's where the ultimate sacrifice was done. God Almighty proved his love toward us and that he sent his only begotten son so that we could be reconciled to him. And then Jesus said, I have to go to the Father that I may send the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, the one who teaches us and guides us. Every true believer, and I'm using the word true believer in Jesus Christ, the ones that truly have made him Lord and Savior of their life. Well, the Spirit of God comes and dwells in us. Because while we're in this world, we're in a spiritual battle. This flesh rages strong against the Spirit of God within us. It does not like the fact that we're saying, Lord, I submit to you. See, our flesh likes to be its own God. It likes to rule its own self. But when we ask Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of our life, we're saying our spirit submits to God Almighty. We realize that without Him, we're lost. We're damned to hell if it wasn't because of what Jesus Christ did for us on Calvary. Because God is a loving God, but He's a holy God. He's a just God. But He made a way to prove to us that we can be the children of God. Yesterday I said, get a chance to read Psalms 139. I'm going to read Psalms 139. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. And you see, as we point a finger at you, maybe, we've got three fingers pointing back at us. So as we teach and as we go through the word of the Lord, this is also speaking to us. It's not that we're any better. It's just we're the mouthpiece that God is choosing to use right now. And I am so thankful um, that he's allowing us to be. I sometimes think of it as we're just a microphone in his life. I want his words to be what comes through, not me. I don't want to cause static. I want just the Lord to be able to speak through me. To bless his children to bless those that are hungry after him Psalms 139 says the perfect knowledge of man God's perfect knowledge of man for the chief musician a psalm of David and sometimes they say that word has an expression for the chief musician um, that it can be a reference to God so like that David wrote this for God it may not be so much that he wrote it for a musician, but to God, the almighty musician. It says, oh, there comes the first airplane. I can speak louder than the airplane. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. You see, the Lord knows everything about us. We may hide things from other people. We can't hide them from God. He knows the intents of our hearts. He knows the thoughts that are in our mind. 
Um, we fool ourselves if we think that we can get away with things um, and God not know it. That's just a lie of the enemy. He knows all things. He knew where Adam and Eve were in the garden. He wanted them to realize what they were doing. But knowing us, knowing this about us, he still loved us. He still sent Jesus. He still made a way. We were created in the image of God and he's got great wonderful things planned for those that are willing to accept his ways. You know, it's like a, a parent that wants to bless their child, but they can't give the child the blessings they want to while that child is being rebellious because that child is going to waste and ruin himself with those blessings maybe that the parent has. So the parent waits and waits, hoping that that child would realize how much they actually love them and how much is in store for them. The prodigal son didn't realize how much the father loved him, how much the father really had for him. It was more than just the riches. He pushed and the father said, okay, you want them? I'll give them to you. And he wasted them. And he realized that, yes, he had a bunch of friends while he had the riches, while he had the money, while he had the goods. But the moment everything ran out, so did those friends. But God, the Father, the Father there, was waiting for the Son to come running back home. God is waiting for us to come running back home to Him. He is the Heavenly Father. He is the Creator Almighty. He created mankind, people, to be much more than we can imagine. But it's only possible through accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Verse 4 says, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you knew it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. You know, we don't understand. How can God love us in all our messes, all the mistakes that we make, all the mistakes that we've made? But yet, He does. He does, and he's still there with us. You see, he understands that we are in a spiritual battle. He knows our heart. If our heart is toward him, he knows it. He knows our thoughts. He knows when we mess up, but we don't want to mess up. We want to have victory over this. And you know what? One day, without you even realize it, you'll realize you've overcome that thing. That's how it happened with Pastor Matt and I. You know, we didn't even realize that we were delivered from alcohol. Delivered from drugs. Everything went and we didn't even realize until one day we opened our refrigerator and... Oh! There's beers in there that we never drank. Well, we didn't drink them. We got rid of them. Old music. Got rid of it. We became a new creation in Christ Jesus. Our desires changed. Yesterday I talked about what is your greatest passion? What do you find the greatest pleasure in? Because that's going to determine the path of your life. What you hold most precious is going to determine the way you live your life. Is the Lord the most precious thing? Because when you make Him the most precious thing, he makes everything else fall in proper order. Your family, your marriage, your just situations in life, they will fall in their proper order. I better hurry up and finish this. It says, such knowledge is for the wonder, it is high, I cannot, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me no matter how far you go how far things may take you the Lord will be with you it says I if I say surely the darkness shall fall on me even the night shall be light about me indeed the darkness shall not hide from shall not 
hide from you, but the night shines as a day. The darkness as a light are both alike to you. In other words, you may be in the darkest pit, but the Lord is with you and he is light. There is no darkness in Christ. Whenever a little bit of light goes into a dark room, it dispels the darkness around it. That light shines. You know how they say the light at the end of the tunnel. Christ is the light of the world. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. Oh, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. We can't even imagine how great are the blessings that God has for us. You know, when I awake, I am still with you. We may go to bed and we can know that God is with us. That's why there's a peace that passes all understanding. Because we know the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. It says, teach me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Let God put checks in you. Let the Holy Spirit correct you when you need correction. Say, Lord, you search my heart. Don't let my heart deceive me. I want to be right with you, Lord. It says, and know my anxieties. The Lord knows the things that bother us and he will help us overcome them. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, lead me in the way everlasting. Again, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you and guide you. Allow him to instruct you in the ways of righteousness. And if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, ask him today. You don't need to be in a church service. You don't need to be in a big place to ask the Lord. Right where you're at, by yourself, you can ask the Lord. And the Spirit of God will begin to show you. And it is important that you find a good Bible-believing church. Let us know if you've made that choice. You are welcome to come and join us at Intercession City Church of God. Um, we're a small church. We are casual, but we do not compromise the Word of God. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are not victims, we are victors in Christ Jesus.